In this example, we're going to plot a function multiple times and play around with the axis limits to study how to best display data. This circuit is called an RLC circuit because it contains a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor. When you flip the switch, the charge on the capacitor is represented by this long equation. Let's go ahead and start coding. Part A wants us to construct a time vector ranging from 0 to 20 seconds. Before we actually make the t vector, we should probably define the other parameters we'll be using later on. We don't necessarily have to do this right now, but we might as well. Here, I'm using e as shorthand for 10 to the negative 5. When used in this context, the expression is equivalent to 5 times 10 to the negative 5. This does not mean 5 times the number e, 2.718, raised to the negative 5 power. The problem didn't tell us what step size to use. We were only told the start and end point of the vector. If you aren't explicitly given the step size, that means you have the freedom to pick your own. In general, I like trying a step size of 0.01. Of course, we can always adjust it later if the plots don't look as smooth as we want. You could also use the linspace function to make the t-vector. It's personal preference. In part b, we need to make q of t. This is pretty straightforward. We essentially copy and paste the formula given in the problem statement into MATLAB with some caveats. First, notice the use of the exp function. We need to use this function because it's MATLAB's way of computing the exponential. We also use the dot multiply between the exp and the cosine terms. This is because both terms will return a vector, so we need to do element-wise multiplication. We do not need to dot multiply the q0 and the exp because q0 is just a scalar. And we do not need dot multiplication or dot division within the exp term because all these terms within the exp function are scalars as well, except for the t. Similarly, we don't need any dot arithmetic within the square root term because all the terms within the square root are scalars. You can include the dots if you want to and it won't change the output. But if you omit the dot here, you will get an error. Part C wants us to create a 3 by one subplot grid and plot Q of T on each. Let's start by creating the subplots, adding an overall title to the entire figure, and plotting Q of T on the upper subplot. We use the sgtitle function instead of just the regular title function because the sgtitle function applies the title to the entire figure window. If we just use the regular title function, it would apply it to just the first subplot and it wouldn't give off the impression that the title is shared among all three subplots which we will eventually create. We then use the subplot command with three arguments. The first two arguments, 3 and 1, tell MATLAB that we want to create a matrix of subplots with three rows and one column. The last argument, also a one, tells MATLAB that we want to be plotting on the first subplot within the 3 by one subplot array, which is this one. Note that you don't yet see the other two subplots because we haven't plotted anything on them yet. The prompt said to make the x-axis extend from 0 to 0 0.2 seconds on the upper subplot, which we can see by the xlim command. The xlim, xlabel, and ylabel commands all apply only to this particular subplot, although we'll be recycling the x and y labels for the other subplots. Now let's go ahead and make the other subplots. 
Feel free to copy and paste the code, but don't forget to change the subplot and the xlim lines. For the middle subplot, we kept the first two arguments 3 and 1 to denote the 3 by 1 subplot array, but now we have this 2 to indicate that we'll be plotting on the second of three subplots. The x-axis now extends to 2 instead of 0.2. For the last subplot, we changed the last argument to 3, and we removed the xlim line because the problem says to plot the full 20 second time range. We can see from the third graph that the charge on the capacitor oscillates and decays over time until it eventually levels out at zero charge. It's clear that the middle subplot is the best of the three. The first subplot doesn't tell you the full story, and the bottom subplot compresses the oscillations and displays too much of the boring steady state behavior. If you look very closely, the first two subplots appear slightly jagged, so we could go back and decrease our step size maybe something like 0 0.001 would be better. You should fiddle with this. Although we said the middle subplot is the best of the three, you can also argue that perhaps two seconds is still maybe too long on the x-axis. Maybe plotting up to say 1.6 seconds would actually be the best. The purpose of this exercise is to illustrate that there's actually a lot of gray area in coding, especially when it comes to figures. Although coding may seem very binary, the beauty of visualization allows us to adopt our own preferences and styles so that we can tell the same story to our tastes. Just as how there's no single correct step size, there's no single correct x or y axis limit you should use. If you plotted for 2 seconds and your friend plotted for 1.6 seconds, you would both be correct, per se. And even though plotting for the full 20 seconds still produces a quantitatively correct graph, it's not a good graph. I would encourage you to keep playing around with the various plotting options. We'll be plotting extensively in this class, so start solidifying your own preferences now. Maybe you like a certain line width, color, or marker shape. Maybe you like toying with the axis limits. It really doesn't matter as long as you can convey all of the necessary information in a clean looking plot. See you next time.